could you picture JR's commentary with a move like that? Oh my god, he broke him in half! He's broken in half, god damn it! Oh, pole driver! I'll be calling an ambulance for Spike, I think he's dead. going on Godzilla Nation, this is our Godzilla, we are back with some more Smackdown, shut your mouth, thank you for joining me as always, we did it, I threw it over to you guys, put a like goal out there, if you guys wanted to see this as a series, I said it, you achieved it, and it is now locked in, Smackdown shut your mouth from start to finish, I cannot wait to dive into this, because as I said in the first episode, this game really set up all future my career components that we see in WWE wrestling games today. We are playing as Triple H. If you didn't catch the first episode, it is linked in the description down below. We drafted ourselves to SmackDown. We actually drafted SmackDown's first 10 superstars manually. And I threw it over to you guys. Who do you think won the draft? And a lot of people reached out on social media and said that they feel SmackDown definitely got the better of it. So thank you for backing my decisions. But without further ado, it is time to dive into another episode. Maven versus Albert in a Hell in a Cell match. We've got the main event, Edge Benoit in a cage single. We've got Bradshaw in the mid card in a playing singles match. This is what I was trying to say in the last episode in the way of really eclectic match types. I don't see how you'd open the show with a Hell in a Cell, you'd close with a cage match, and then you'd have someone like Triple H in the mid-card. And that is going to be a common trend you're going to see throughout each and every episode of this game. It was a bit wacky the way they did it, but it's a great season mode experience nonetheless. Time for us to hit backstage. Is there anybody around to talk to? Left and right, that's what we're always going to do at the beginning of each and every episode. I'm going to back Albert to win this one. Did it comfortably. Of course, we've got to back ourselves to beat Bradshaw here. Bradshaw, the WWE Hardcore Champion, one of the superstars we drafted in the top 10 to ensure SmackDown got that title. The only title we weren't able to draft was the Intercontinental Championship which Rob Van Dam currently has, and he was taken within the first three or four picks to Raw. But here we come. The Cerebral Assassin. The King of Kings. The game himself. Triple H. One of my favorite WWE superstars of all time. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's get the point of discussion going early in this video. Let me know who your favorite superstar or superstars are of all time. They don't necessarily have to be linked to WWE as well. They could be from New Japan Pro Wrestling. They could be from TNA. They could be from Ring of Honor. They could even be in the up and coming All Elite Wrestling AEW. Double or nothing going down very soon. Cannot wait to see how that plays out. So let me know. Triple H is one of mine. Shawn Michaels has always been one of my favorites as well. The Undertaker would probably round out my top three favorite, like, Attitude Era superstars. But currently, probably Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins. They're the type of superstars I love throwing my support behind. I preferred Bradshaw when he was like this. The JBL gimmick, even though it got over, I wasn't really a fan. Man, I missed that hardcore title. They unveiled the new WWE 24-7 Championship. That's, uh, that's a little different. That's their attempt of making the hardcore title exist within a PG era, and I don't think it's going to work. They're managing to keep it very, uh, very relevant for the first week, definitely, especially with our truth taking to social media, thinking it's the European Championship, and hiding in his hotel room, not sleeping because he fears that someone's going to steal it from him. 
I really hope it gets over. I would have preferred the actual Hardcore Championship to return. That's what I actually thought it was going to be when they announced that Mick Foley was going to be unveiling the title. But nonetheless, back to the action. We're almost halfway to a SmackDown already. Bradshaw hits the DDT. Neckbreaker from Triple H. You're not going to see much in the way of varied movesets here. Because back in the old days, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to believe, I know, but we were very limited with the moves that we could and couldn't do in wrestling games. So apart from maybe 10, maybe 15 different moves, you're going to see the same things over and over again. It doesn't make the experience any less. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I'm hoping this is just the beginning of diving into older wrestling titles because the original SmackDown vs. Raw was absolutely brilliant. Here comes the pain, which followed Shut Your Mouth. Absolutely brilliant. If those are things you want to see, and we can go back even further, like WCW Mayhem, WWF Attitude. I know what you're thinking. How dare you say WWF, God Zero. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what they were called in the beginning. Let's not shy away from it. But I'm a huge wrestling fan. I'm always happy to bring new content to the channel. And if we can get more wrestling stuff going, I'm happy to do so. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Going for the pedigree. That should be him down and out. One, two, three. Thank you for coming, Bradshaw. Thank you for hardly putting up a fight for somebody who's supposed to be a WWE champion. The one thing that you can't adjust yourself is the difficulty level. Going into games like this, it's a kind of system where it starts off really easy to let you transition into the game and then as you progress, it gets harder. So I am going to go out on a limb and say there will be a few matches that we do drop later in the game. But the undisputed champion, Undertaker, is here on SmackDown. He's eyeing off Triple H. Did he come here to show off his belt? No, he come here to stare me down. Two men competing for one belt. So much is going on. Because Vince McMahon made it perfectly clear. With Benoit beating Edge in the cage match to round out SmackDown. But Vince has made it clear he wants to make us the number one contender for the undisputed championship. Which puts us being drafted to SmackDown aside. Because the undisputed champion back in the day, he fought on both SmackDown and Raw. Here we go. Chris Benoit, Bradshaw to kick the night off with William Regal and Rikishi in the mid-card. Triple H and The Rock to close out the night. That is a main event. That is one hell of a card. That's what I'm talking about. Get around it. Put me in a better position, please. The crowd's electric. Another night of SmackDown action. I really loved that stage setup back in the day. Back when Daniel Bryan made the comment about the fist coming out and fisting. And... What? What does he want? Oh, Val Venus, the big Val Boski. Let me just say one thing. No, you can't. Why does he get a title shot? Because I'm Triple H. I'm the gang. What is so special about him? Um, I'm one of the best of all time. I don't care about the title shot anymore. Let's really find out who the superior athlete is right here tonight. Are you up for it, Triple H? That's impossible. How selfish and egotistical. Come on, JR. He's great. Go for it. That better not replace my match with The Rock. It has. We're now taking on the big Valboski in tonight's main event instead of The Rock. We're going to have to put him in his place. Anyone to the left? In one to the right? Oh, we do have someone to the right. It's The Rock. Curious to see what the People's Champion has to say on the fact that the Big Valboski has just robbed the SmackDown universe of seeing a brilliant main event. I love interacting with the superstars backstage. It's the People's Champion! Triple H first The Rock has two words for you. What two words are they? Eye contact. Tonight you and I will fight in a handicap match. The question is, who's going to be Triple H's partner? This person must have several traits. 
reverse, Triple H looks dumb. So his partner has to also look dumb. Second, anyone dumb enough to team up with Triple H has to be easy to manipulate. Third, anyone who has to stand behind Triple H to face The Rock in a handicap match tonight has to clearly have no guts at all. And that person, of everyone The Rock can think about, has to be, drumroll please, Chris Benoit. Wow. I think The Rock is going out on a limb calling Chris Benoit a, a bit of a coward. He was far from it when it came to his in-ring action. Impromptu match again. We're still going to have our match with Big Valboski. But as I pointed out in the first episode, whenever you do something negatively towards a superstar backstage, it can just trigger matches like this at any point in time. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Benoit is a big factor in some of these old school games that we're going to be playing when it comes to the wrestling titles at least. I know some of you have your foul opinions on what happened with him. Some have different opinions. Personally, I always just like to reflect on his in-ring ability. I don't like to reflect on anything that happened outside the ring. And there's no doubt inside that ring, he was one of the greatest of all time. Technically, with the way he just pulled off some of his moves, he's well and truly up there with the likes of Bret Hart, Dean Malenko, Kurt Angle. No question about it. All right, Benoit, go for it. You've been tagged in. All right. No, I don't want to keep climbing the rope like that. I'm just trying to get tagged back in, Earl. It's been a while. What button do I press to put my hand out to get tagged? I actually should have thought about that before I tagged Benoit into the match. Well, there we go. He was hitting my way. Get back up, Benoit. The Rock is actually kicking his ass here. That's not what we want. Get up, Benoit. Scoop slam from The Rock. Looks to be very much so in control. Come on, you got to reverse this, Benoit. He's gone for a roll up. Two, don't do it. There we go. Slam him, do something. German suplex. Or tag me in. I'll do something. Yeah, I'll get clothesline. That's what I'll do. Alright, it's almost time to put him away. Come here. Here we go. Let's set him up. It's pedigree time. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be two episodes in a row where The Rock has thrown down a challenge like that and has gotten his ass beat in the middle of the ring. I bet he's ruined the decision to throw that challenge out in the first place. Especially now, ladies and gentlemen. Triple H is going to dish it out. Get off me, Earl. Earl Hebner officially a referee over at AEW. Very keen to see that. They've picked up some crucial people that were in the Attitude Era for WWE in the way of Jim Ross on commentary. Earl Hebner as referee. I don't think there's going to be anyone to the left and the right. Let's get this main event underway. I'm going to 
to go with Benoit for the opening match. Maybe we tied him out with that tag match. Has to be William Regal here. And then obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I think we know who's going to be winning this one. Definitely not going to be the big Valboski. Well, at least try my best not to be. Hulk Hogan. Hulkamania running wild on you. That's one of the storylines in this game that is absolutely incredible. Very nostalgic when it comes to that point in time. However, that's not going to be until the back end of the series. So plenty of time to get hyped up for that. Can't wait to get that undisputed championship around my waist. Still haven't fully decided which way we're going to go in the way of being a face or a heel. I mean, we just did turn on the rock. And uh, that could push us in the heel direction, but we will get choices down the track where we can ally ourselves with certain people. We can make decisions that swing the balance. Hello, ladies. Undecided. Because Triple H has the ability to play both, but I've always felt Triple H has played a bad guy exceptionally better than a good guy. The big Valboski. Used to drive the ladies crazy, believe it or not. Coming out in his towel and doing his little strut. I don't think his gimmick would get over in this day and age, especially with Vince McMahon being stuck in this PG era, that's for sure. Valboski with the shoulder block to start things off. Triple H putting him to work. I'm going to see if it's possible for us to get a submission. Like, make him tap out outside of having a finishing move as a submission move because I've never to my knowledge been ever to get a submission victory if I don't have a move like the triple cross face or the walls of Jericho or something like that as my finisher so that's something we can play around with as well we can manipulate the legs and we can go for the figure four because I know that's a move Triple H can do all right let's go for the three in a row there's two let's go for the third oh there it is Manipulate the knee. Well, here we go. Dalboski throws a clothesline that doesn't drop Triple H. Nice bomb there, rope break. Come on, Big Val. Oh, he's knocked out. We should have just gone for the pin. I'm not finished yet. We want to hit that pedigree. We want to make sure of it. We want to give the crowds a show. Considering this was supposed to be me versus The Rock. Spinebuster. And another one. I was going to hat trick it, but uh, looks like we're not going to. Big Galboski starting to bring some momentum his way. Not for long. There's another spine buster. Game over for Val. Because not only will we hit this, but we're going to hit the Matrix. And we will now go for the cover. Count it, Earl. One, two, three. Thank you, Earl. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciate you coming out here and refereeing this match. Triple H continues an undefeated streak. I think we dealt enough damage to Valboski in the ring. I'm not going to jump him. We'll take the, the win. We'll get out of here. Enough salt in the wound already, I feel.
There we go. I did say we were going to win it. You guys didn't believe me, did you? But there we go. Another week of SmackDown complete. I think we will do one more week. We'll do week four because I'm pretty sure when it comes to week five, week five is the pay-per-view. I could be completely wrong. Could be well and truly wrong. It could be five weeks and then the pay-per-view. But I think we've got enough time for another week of action. Still deciding how long these episodes are going to be, whether we're going to do two or three weeks. We've got a tag match. Rikishi and Billy to open up. Edge and Benoit in the middle. We're tag teaming with The Undertaker against Spike Dudley and the big Valboski. Rob Van Dam beat Test in a hardcore match to kick off Raw. The Hardy Boys losing to Brock Lesnar and Rico. They're doing very eclectic matches over there on fucking Raw, let me tell you what. But we're tag teaming with The Undertaker against the two superstars that we've already had victories against in previous weeks. Spike Dudley and the big Valboski. Who have we got backstage? There he is, the dead man. I don't want to talk to him just yet. Billy's going to win. Billy's really OP in this game. Seriously. We're going to go with Benoit. And then obviously here, The Undertaker and Triple H are going to take this one out. But Billy is seriously so OP in this game. I can guarantee you, 9 out of 10 times, every time we see Billy's name and we simulate a match, he is going to be victorious, without a shadow of a doubt. I don't understand why. But Billy and Chuck, they, they were a big deal back in the day. But this man here... The American badass gimmick. It's been rumoured that he was going to return to this gimmick for a very long time, but we haven't seen it yet. Personally, not my favourite. My favourite Undertaker was the Ministry of Darkness Undertaker. Probably one of the more underrated versions of himself, but it was the one that predominantly pushed through in the Attitude Era. Still had some huge moments with that gimmick though, the badass gimmick. Here we come. You know who this is. I've always loved the back and forth between Triple H and The Undertaker. They have had some of the greatest feuds in WWE history. Cannot wait to see both of them inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I mean, yeah, okay, we've got Triple H with DX this year's Hall of Fame, but that's not where he deserves to be. He deserves his, his singles one, and I think that's going to come sooner than later. I feel The Undertaker might get inducted within the next one or two years, because even though he's still pushing on for shows like the Saudi Arabia Super Showdown, I really think The Undertaker's prime has well and truly passed him, which it does hurt me to say a little bit because The Undertaker has always been and always will be one of my favourite wrestlers of all time, but some people need to learn when enough is enough. Kind of like Bill Goldberg. Like, he's got his Hall of Fame induction. He doesn't need to be hanging around anymore. Why he's coming back is beyond me. Here comes Spike Dudley. Wouldn't it be great to see him just pop up and steal the 24-7 championship. Because he popped up and stole the hardcore championship a few times back in the day. And his partner, ladies and gentlemen, we know who it is. Hello, ladies. The big Valboski. Couldn't get enough of Triple H last week, so he's coming out for a second helping. I think what we can afford to do in this match as well is we can tag The Undertaker in and we'll let The Undertaker do a bulk of the work and then we can just sneak in and get the win. That's a Triple H thing to do. That's a very Triple H thing to do.
Or, we could do the complete opposite. We could do everything ourselves to showcase our strength going into the pay-per-view. But it looks like The Undertaker is going to kick action off anyway. Spike Dudley kicking it off for his team. I'm still finding these buttons very frustrating. Like, I just want to get at thank you. I just want to get ringside. The Undertaker versus Spike Dudley. He's going to get slaughtered. Oh, <laughs> could you picture JR's commentary with a move like that? Oh my god, he broke him in half! He's broken in half, god damn it! Oh, pole driver! I'll be calling an ambulance for Spike, I think he's dead. Is there a mercy rule? Let's just let The Undertaker go to work here. We'll sneak in when we can get the opportunity. Don't you worry about that. It's good to just sit back and and appreciate The Undertaker's ring craft as he gets dropped with a drop kick by Spike Dudley. Not many commentators would ever say that in their career. Big Valbowski's in. The Undertaker's had enough. He's going to bring Triple H in. I was happy to just sit back. Oh, Triple H takes out The Undertaker. That was a complete accident, but um, given the scope of the situation with those two heading into the pay-per-view to face each other, some would argue that Triple H did that on purpose. Come on, Val. We've almost got a smack... Okay, we've got a smackdown. However, I think it might be a little bit too early. We've hit the pedigree. Spike's gonna get in to break this up here, isn't he? One, two. No, he's kicked out of the pedigree. I had a feeling it was too early to pull it off. However, the fact that we have already hit the pedigree means that our bar should fill up a little bit quicker the second time around. From memory, that's how it works. What are you going to do, Spike? A team shot on the big Come on, Val. Into the corner. I bet you're wishing your teammate was there, huh? Superplex. That's going to sting. I don't even know how to get The Undertaker in here to give me a hand. The Undertaker's got a smackdown over there as well, and we can... Uh, we can get The Undertaker in here, he can get the win, and we can just make sure Spike doesn't interfere. One, two, and he gets a near fall. Get out of here, Spike. Get out of your depth. Undertaker's probably wondering why we haven't even bothered tagging him in yet. Val's dead. We can probably get the cover here. We're not far off getting another smackdown, though. One, two, three. There it is. Triple H picks up the win. But Triple H and The Undertaker. Pretty easy main event, if you ask me. We're about to find out whether or not this is actually the last show before the pay-per-view, because I can't remember off the top of my head if it's four weeks or five weeks and then the pay-per-view. These two guys are being forced to fight before their title match. This place is going to explode at any moment. Attack him or don't do anything. I mean, Triple H is the type of superstar that would, but I'm not going to. Neither of them are going to give up this fight. I can't wait to see the pay-per-view. But ladies and gentlemen, the pay-per-view is going to be in the next episode, so you are going to have to wait. Thank you for joining me, as always, for another episode, however. Greatly appreciate you stopping by to check out my content. If you did enjoy this episode, leave a like on the video. It goes a long way to supporting myself, and I seriously cannot thank you guys enough 
for all that support. If you're new to the channel, plenty of other content to check out. I urge you to do so. And if you enjoy what I'm throwing down, you can pledge your allegiance to the God Zero Nation by hitting subscribe. My social media links are down below. Hit that notification bell before you leave. But that's it from me, guys. I'm out of here. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.